is complete without adding a few herbs and we've got a fun decorative way to add those herbs into your garden. Try building a spiral herb garden or an herb spiral. The idea is that you create this six foot diameter spiral that mounds towards the center. The center of course has a lot more drainage in it because of gravity plus adding and amending that soil as well. So you're able to plant more Mediterranean plants in the center and then as we work down the spiral you're incorporating more water loving herbs. It's a great way to add some versatility to your herb garden. The first thing that we want to do since we're building this on existing crushed granite is to protect that granite so that our soil doesn't penetrate and mess up our area in case this garden is ever removed. Now we could use heavy landscape fabric um, if we wanted to, but we actually came across a six foot diameter smart pot that we're going to use. Now the smart pot typically has you can see has a higher wall to it so what we're going to do is fold in that wall a little bit just because we don't want our uh, spiral mound wall to have to be as tall as this container is. As you're laying out your either landscape fabric or your smart pot if you have pre-existing irrigation you want to make sure that you go ahead and pipe that in at this point. We had some existing drip irrigation and so we just cut a slit in our smart pot through the liner and pulled that drip irrigation up and so that it's contained inside our garden for us to continue to use that irrigation. After laying out our smart pot, we're going to start building our dry stack stone on the outside of it so we won't really see that lining at all. Now we're using just some old leftover um, flagstone. Really the nice thing about this is you can use whatever sort of hard scape material you might have laying around. You could use bricks, you could use pavers. Like I said, we're using this stone here. Um, so we're going to start just layering this and what we found to be the best is to actually put one layer all the way around the circumference and just keep layering it. And of course you want to do it in a brick laying fashion so that each layer overlaps the breaks of the stone below it. As you're building your wall, you also might find that it helps to put a little bit of soil on the inside of the garden to kind of reinforce that backside and stabilize it a little bit. Now before you put too much soil in there, we've got to start thinking about where our spiral wall is going to be built. So using some chalk, we have drawn out where our spiral is going to be. Um, and again, if you're running short on matching stone, the first couple of layers that you're putting on your spiral can be a different type of rock or paver um, because that's not going to be seen. It's going to be covered up with soil. So, But you want to go ahead and start that process again as you're building your exterior wall if you're starting to fill it with some soil. And then the other thing is, is that again we're creating a mound garden so the center is going to be probably about twice the height of the exterior wall. So you want to keep that in mind. Just because the outside wall might not be that high, the inside wall will be higher. Now this is the time to kind of step back at the garden that you've built and take a look at it and make sure that you're satisfied with the layout and the spiral, the symmetry of it, um, and to do any tweaks that you might want to do. Also to kind of check those rocks and make sure that they're fairly stable. Um, again, just for you as a homeowner to maybe make sure that they're safe for you to be on. So now at this point, you can see we still have to put some more soil in here. And this is the time that we're going to start amending some of that soil. So we've got a couple of different products over here. Again, for the top of the center, that's where our drought tolerant herbs are going to be. So we're going to incorporate both some sand and then also some just chicken grit. Um, and both of these products are really going to enhance the drainage of the center of our herb garden. So we'll go ahead and mix some of this in. As we come down around the spiral, we're getting into just more soil and compost. And then finally, of course, we've got our bog garden at the bottom that's really going to hold all that moisture. All of this is going to make three different microclimates for us to plant in. Now that we've got our herb spiral built and filled with the different types of soil, we're going to start incorporating our plants. And so you can see here we've started in the center. Of course, it's easier to start planting in the center before you get the outside planted. Um, and what we've got here are some Mediterranean or drought heat-loving herbs. Um, because we've mixed in the grit and the sand, 
it's going to drain faster. Also, because it's upright and mounded here, it also, gravity will naturally drain it faster. Furthermore, because it is surrounded by more hardscape, we're gonna heat those roots up a little bit more as well. So again, the Mediterranean herbs work really well for the center of your garden. So some of the plants that we're incorporating up here into this hotter area are some lavender, rosemary, curry, and sage. Um, and you can see here that a lot of these have more of that silver or blue-green foliage look to them. And that's because that's a natural thing that a lot of plants that are growing in heat or drought conditions have because it actually helps retain that moisture in the plant. So again, it adds a little color to the garden and we're going to go ahead and get these planted. So now we have our second layer of herbs laid out and you can see these herbs are definitely more green. They've got some variegation. We've got bronze fennel in here. We've also got a lemon sculpture geranium which adds some interesting texture to the garden as well. We've incorporated parsley, some alliums or chives. Um, we've got some also some basil purple basil and then we put some creeping thyme in here as well and those are kind of nice just to help soften the edges of that hardscape now as we get down here you might be wondering about this particular pot this is new to our um, spiral mound garden and that's because this is a mint and if you've ever grown mint you know how aggressive it can be we wanted to incorporate some mint um, but we're going to use a pot that doesn't have any holes and what we're going to do is just dig this into the ground here, our soil. And we're gonna make sure that lip stays above the actual soil line so that it doesn't creep over. We're gonna fill it with some of this soil as well around it and plant our mint directly in that pot. That way it stays contained and doesn't take over our whole spiral mound garden. So finally down here in our bog garden where we're gonna plant some herbs, we, we were a little loose with our definition of herbs. So we've got a hibiscus here. Now there are tea hibiscus that you can incorporate, but a lot of hibiscus enjoy having uh, a wetter condition. We also have a taro here, which of course um, you can harvest the roots from taro uh, for a product, a crop. Um, and then we have some Corsicana mint that we're gonna plant. And this particular mint does like more wet conditions. Um, now some other plants you might incorporate or something like bee balm and monarda um, those also do well in wetter conditions that would be appropriate for the bottom of your spiral mound garden so now you can see we've got it all planted and we've got it packed full of herbs but can you ever have too many herbs in your garden one thing about this, when I mentioned it's like a linear garden, but it's wrapped up into a spiral, we actually measured the linear uh, distance of this, and it's about 18 and a half feet. We also measured the width of the garden bed, which is about 10 inches. Now typically a spiral mound garden is six foot in diameter, just like our keyhole gardens, because that's the ideal depth at which you can still reach from the outside into the center to harvest it. So again, another option to create a microclimate for different herbs and it's decorative as well. Now we just need to water it in and wash off some of this excess soil. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.